Hi guys, Zach here. Today we're talking about hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia, or high potassium levels, can be hazardous, and as a result, it's an electrolyte abnormality that all medical students and junior doctors should understand. In this video, we'll be covering where potassium is found in the human body, why having too much of it is dangerous, and what causes it to shoot up in the first place. We'll cover treatment of hyperkalemia in video number two. Let's start with the basics. Remember that potassium is found in the body as K plus cations in solution. So when we talk about potassium, we need to think about where fluid is found in the body and how much potassium you'd find dissolved there. We tend to think about body fluid being split into two compartments. The extracellular and the intracellular, fluid inside cells and fluid outside of cells. The extracellular compartment can be further divided into intravascular fluid, the fluid within your blood vessels, your blood serum essentially, and the interstitial fluid, the fluid in your tissues that surrounds your cells. Those among you who speak ancient Greek, not you, will know that the eme in hyperkalemia refers to the blood. When we speak of hyperkalemia, we are talking about high intravascular potassium in your blood serum, rather than high total body potassium, which will be more difficult to measure. As levels are broadly similar across the extracellular compartment, we can assume that serum potassium reflects extracellular potassium. If you've got too much in your bloodstream, you've also got too much surrounding your cells in the interstitium. But why is this important? Why is having too much potassium around your cells dangerous? Here comes the science bit. Remember that unlike sodium, potassium is a predominantly intracellular cation. While the normal range of serum potassium is 3.5 to 5.5 miller equivalents per litre, the normal intracellular potassium is more like 150 miller equivalents per litre. The balance between intracellular and extracellular electrolytes is critical to cell function. If there's way more potassium surrounding the cell than there's supposed to be, the cell's function will be impacted. Now I don't want to get too bogged down in resting or action potentials today as they're beyond the scope of what we need. For now, it's enough to remember that too much extracellular potassium makes cells more excitable. This can be dangerous, particularly in the heart muscle, the myocardium. You see, you want your heart muscle cells to behave themselves and contract in an orderly fashion. If hyperkalemia gets these troublemakers too excited, it causes dangerous irregular heart rhythms, arrhythmias. In extremis, hyperkalemia can stop the heart altogether. Because of the effect it has on these cardiac myocytes, hyperkalemia causes a characteristic ECG abnormality, one that every doctor should be able to recognise. Remember, an ECG is a readily available bedside test, the results of which may be available before your blood test, giving you a vital and timely clue. As the potassium rises, the familiar ECG pattern slowly becomes a sine wave, as seen here. Watch as the T waves become peaked, the P waves become flat, and the QRS complex becomes broad. By the time you get to the sine wave, you're already in tiger territory. Ventricular fibrillation, or even asystole, accompanied by a patient in cardiac arrest, may well follow if left untreated. So it's potassium's effect on the heart that makes it scary. But what causes hyperkalemia in the first place? There are a number of noteworthy causes, but hyperkalemia is most commonly due to inadequate excretion. Keeping potassium in the normal range is the kidney's job. That's why... The kidney has a very special place in the heart. The distal tubule plays a key role in regulating electrolyte levels by secreting potassium into the urine and reabsorbing sodium. This is done under the watchful eye of the hormone aldosterone, which is made in the adrenal glands. If the kidneys aren't working properly, either due to an acute injury or chronic disease, they are unable to secrete potassium into the urine. Instead, it builds up in the blood and causes mischief. There can also be problems if aldosterone isn't doing its job, either because it isn't being produced by the adrenal gland, as in mineralocorticoid deficiency, or because it's being switched off by an aldosterone antagonist like spironolactone, a drug used in heart failure. If potassium secretion is turned down, serum and extracellular potassium rises. 
But what else can cause a high serum potassium? Well, remember that there's a lot more potassium inside your cells than there is outside your cells. Potassium levels in the extracellular compartment can rise if some of this intracellular potassium gets shifted out. If many cells are damaged at once, such as in a crush injury or severe burns, for example, extracellular potassium can shoot up as the potassium spills out of those cells. This can also be a cause of a false positive hyperkalemia. If red cells are damaged when blood is being taken, intracellular potassium pours out, giving a falsely raised reading of serum potassium. This is known as hemolysis and does not represent a true hyperkalemia. If hemolysis is suspected, the blood sample should be urgently repeated. Increased intake of potassium can also be a cause of hyperkalemia, but this is much more likely to be a problem if excretion is impaired due to kidney disease. So now you know why we worry about hyperkalemia and what causes it. But how do we treat it? Join us next time to find out. Until then.